All right, everyone, welcome to part three and the final part of the mo this month, excuse me, Ask the King for April 2016. Before we get started with the final questions, what I want to do is the special segment where I give the verbal thank yous to the following patrons who made pretty significantly large contributions to my Patreon in the months of February and March. So without further ado, here goes. Special thanks go to the following patrons. Kevin Stiles, Vidar Viking Elvigan, Matt Allen, Tom Dooley, Connor, uh, Low Tier Lord, Sammy Samosa, Ben Wynn, Sam Benson, Erwin Hames, Mike Hunt 2018, Epic Loggy HD, Jerrica Chai, St. Jimmy, Christine Gebhardt, Michael Denealt, Dene excuse me, I probably screwed that up, DS Kylo Loren, I just said Kylo Loren. DS Kylo Ren. <laughs> I said like Ralph Loren. Kylo Loren. Actually, that could be a cool cool clothing line. Kylo Kylo Ren's clothing line. Kylo Loren. All right. I blew that one. Thomas McDonald. Hank Duma. Faithin13. Papa Neeks. Cooper. QPZMWN. The Epic Rob. Jesus with Lightsabers. Last Rambo 341. Logan Shannon. Francisco Resto. Aaron Carpenter. Jacob Hendricks, The Hidden Boss, Planet Jeff, Donovan DeVille, Cito, Demarcus Fitzhugh, A.V., Blaine Mayo, Emerald Seven, Alan Hill, Jacob Curtis, The Fire Rises, Med Iman Radhuin, apologies if I did not pronounce that one right, Hassan Kali, Daz Boshe, and Matthew Capers. Thank you to all of you for your big contributions in the past couple of months. If anyone pledges $20 or, excuse me, $10 or more in the next couple of months until the next Ask the King, your name will be announced in the next video, okay? All right, let's wrap this up with the following, uh, the, the, the final Twitter questions, excuse me, and then the face, or the, excuse me, I'm screwing us all up. Let's, fi <laughs> let's finish this up with the fi final, I still can't do it. One more time, I'm gonna get it this time. Let's finish this up with the final forum questions followed by the Twitter questions. I did it. All right. Holy shit. All right. Next question is from Kat. And Kat asks the following. Hey, Phil, recently you played anime-based fighting games like Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm and Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse. On May 31st, a fighting game based on the anime manga series One Piece will be released called One Piece Burning Blood. Would you consider continuing branching out with anime-based games and pick up this one? Possibly as a patron playthrough or something you do when you have downtime even. Well, apparently it's released at the end of May. And there's really not going, nothing going on at the end of May. There were supposed to be a couple games that got delayed. And that very first week of June, there's really nothing going on. So the bottom line is there's a strong chance I'll be checking this one out. However, I have to pose the question, and I'm sure people will now message me with the answer. Is this a game like Naruto or like Dragon Ball where there's story and you progress through the story and you do story-based combat and that kind of stuff? Or is it a pure-on fighting game? Because if it's a pure fighting game, then I don't know if I would want to play it because I've never done one of these One Piece fighters before. But if it's a story-based game where you go through narrative and there's you know challenges and stuff in a single-player campaign, then I would definitely consider playing it. So based on that answer... <clears throat> we'll see what happens, and I may be checking that out in late May. It actually sounds good to me, because I haven't played a One Piece game in a million years, right? Okay, the next question. Hey, Phil, quick question for you. For the past few playthroughs, I noticed that you often say or tweet that you ran out of time. This happens with your Black Ops 3 zombie gameplay with your friends, and more specifically, uh, out of curiosity, what do you mean by that? Don't you set your own hours? Why, just extend, why not just extend the playthroughs you're enjoying and have fun with it rather than set arbitrary restrictions? Is it the time limit that you have... Uh, blah, say that again. Is this the time limit that you set so you have enough time to babysit uploads or is there other stuff going on behind the scenes? I only ask because I remember back in the day when you lived in Connecticut, if you were really into the games you'd play, you'd play them well into the night without any restriction. Now you seem to have a much more rigid schedule. Just wondering what changed for you that you made to decide to give yourself more reasonable business hours. Thanks. DML8... Nine seven, ask that question. Well, DML, this is a unique combination of two factors that kind of happened hand in hand, coinciding when I moved across the country here to the state of Washington. Number one, people just said I made too many videos. They basically told me you play too many games, and you're playing way too long during the day. Your streams are too long. Your gameplay is too long. 
You're, you're flooding our YouTube inboxes with too many gameplay videos. It's far too much. What you should do is lengthen your videos so they're not just 5 or 10 minutes long anymore, but now they're, say, 15 to 30 minutes long each, and you should do less of them in a day. You should reduce the amount of gameplay that you do. What you should do is take time to work on other stuff. We really enjoy your vlogging. We enjoy your game reviews, which you haven't been doing a lot of, and we want you to focus more in on that kind of stuff. So I listen directly to my audience, and that's pretty much what I've done. You know, I used to do a long gameplay stream that could be anywhere from four to five hours. That's been reduced down now to three and a half to four hours. I used to do two streams a day. Now, most days, I only do one stream. Sometimes I'll do a second se session of gameplay, but usually it's offline. That way, there's not too much excessive streaming. I take a lot more time now to do things like vlogging and, and edited style reviews i really feel that the quality of the reviews have gone up unfortunately the viewership goes down which is kind of silly and stupid in my opinion people don't accept change for years people say your, your your reviews are great but it's just you talking to a camera what you need to do is to be more professional you need to edit in all the gameplay you need to dub your voice over it and make the same kind of points and make them more abridged and they'll be much better i did that views go down so you tell me what i'm doing wrong i'm literally doing exactly what my viewing audience tells me Views go down. Okay, great. Doesn't seem to make much sense, does it? But I digress. Um, when I moved, I decided I was going to listen more to the viewers, and I have. And so if you look at my gameplay videos, they're much longer now than they used to be. And there's a lot fewer of them in the day, right? <clears throat> I'm taking time to do other kinds of stuff rather than just gameplay, 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 gameplay. In most cases, the past couple of weeks has been pretty heavy because there's been so much coming out at once, but when it gets slower, you notice I'm doing more vlogging. I'm doing vlogging about movies and television and stuff now and stuff about gaming news, and I'm doing uh, more in-depth and, and edited reviews and stuff, right? Now, at the same time, when I moved from Connecticut to Washington, my life completely changed. You have to understand the difference here. Let, let's compare the times. When I lived in Connecticut, I was a bachelor. I lived by myself, right? Had no responsibilities besides paying the very basic bills that I had there, making sure the place didn't become a pigsty, which wasn't hard because it was a very small condo that I lived in. I ran out to grab food once a day, and that was it, right? I didn't have a lot of responsibilities or anything around the house. It was basically I wake up, throw clothes on, game, 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 run out, grab food, game, 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 and then supervise uploads till I fall asleep, and that was my day, all right? That is not my life anymore. Let me tell you something, when you have a, a serious household, when you live with someone, a significant other, your life changes significantly, and in my opinion, it's changed for the better, all right? So number one, I just don't have the free time to do whatever I want whenever I want anymore, all right? Leanna, my girlfriend, is another human being who I live with. She has things she has to do. She has an online business she has to run. She has a job that she goes to. She has other things going on around that are affecting things like our schedule and stuff like that, right? I can't be here at four in the fucking morning screaming my 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 mind or my, my mouth off at a game because number one, I have neighbors on the sides that would probably rip my fucking head off if I did that. And number two, she's got to sleep because she's got work in the morning a lot of times, right? So I can't. I can't be just doing whatever I want at any time of the day, okay? <clears throat> number two, we, because we live together, want to try to have a schedule where we at least have some kind of a life together. Not that it's I do my thing, she does her thing, and we don't have anything coinciding. So what we try to do is, number one, when we can, we try to maybe wake up and have coffee or something, breakfast in the morning together, but that's not often. It's maybe a couple times a week we get to do that. We try to have dinner together every day, and it doesn't necessarily happen every day, but we try to do that so that we can at least sit down, have a meal, and we can help each other if there needs to be help with the cooking or the cleanup or anything like that, and chores and stuff around the house. We could do them all during that chunk of time that I have in the middle of the day, all right? And we try to have time together at night, but what we found is that it doesn't always work out. Sometimes we have like an hour where we watch something and then she gets really tired because she has to be up in the morning for work and I don't. You know, I get to sleep in a little bit more because my stream is later in the day. So the schedules don't always coincide, but we try to do as much as we can, all right? In addition, there's tons more responsibility here than there ever was before. We got, there's things like the garbage schedule. And, and, you know, taking care of the house and all of that. There's tons more bills and stuff to pay behind the scenes. It's not just about me uploading videos anymore. Now I have to babysit everything with the business, and I have to be doing social media presence, and I have to be doing financial stuff behind the scenes constantly, and I have to help Leanna with stuff going on with her businesses and stuff like that. It's not like it used to be where I was just myself. 
I 100% control all of my time, and the whole day is basically free with nothing going on. It's not like that anymore. Okay? Now, the thing is, I'm okay with that. I'm personally fine with the fact that now I have a more almost, not office hours, because they're certainly not office hours, but a more set schedule. It's not, oh, I'll play whenever for as long as I want, and you have no idea what to expect coming up. You don't know what videos are coming out. Right now, if you follow my, my business, right, you are so much more in the know on what to expect than it was a few, just a few years ago. And anytime that I lived in Connecticut, it was like at any time, I could be playing any game. I'd be playing a bajillion videos coming out of it in one day. You, you know, the times weren't always set of what, day, what time I would uh, schedule. Sometimes I would stream way, way later or whatever. People get upset because now the stream was thrown off and all of that. It's not like that anymore. It's much more consistent, like a business, like a schedule, a timetable. I think it's a lot more professional now than it ever was back then, right? A lot of people agree with me. Um, but yeah, going hand in hand with that, you're right. There are times when maybe I'm doing something and like, well, sadly, I'm out of time. You know, and in particular, he references Black Ops 3 Zombies. Yeah, and that day I had played three and a half hours of zombies. We were doing this run, the second run. We hadn't died yet. We were on wave 28 of the zombies and dinner was ready. Leanna had made dinner. Dinner was ready because then I had stuff that I had scheduled I needed to do that night. And we needed to get stuff going because there was other stuff going on that day. You know? It's not like it used to be where I live by myself and I, it doesn't matter if I'm super late. I, back, you know, when I lived in Connecticut, I could have gone another three fucking hours. Who cares? I would have been starving. But there was nothing, you know, I could have went th three more hours on that stream and just ran out and grabbed food whenever. It's not like that anymore. You know, we, have, we go shopping every week for set meals that we're going to make together and eat together and stuff. And you can't just fuck it up. For the sake of going over crazy for for a, a, a you know one stream when I could easily play that game again if I ever wanted to you know what I mean? I think it's a lot better the way that it's set up right now. It's certainly a lot more professional. Um, on the flip side of that, I certainly can see that my longtime viewers may be disappointed because I don't have that flexibility or that ultimate control that I used to have. A lot of people say to me. Phil, you know, why don't you just do this or do that with all this time that you have? And the bottom line is, I don't have this mysterious free time. I did have it when I lived in Connecticut. When I committed to moving across the country, that was it. I knew I was moving into a much more adult-oriented life. We were going to have lots more responsibilities, set schedules, and things going on. And it was not going to be the same. And I committed to that, and I've stuck with it for two years. And I think my life right now overall is far better than it used to be when I was kind of alone. I'll be honest, my my only interaction that I had with people when I lived in Connecticut was either when I was live streaming or doing videos for YouTube, reading comments, right, tweeting, or every once in a while when I would do something with a friend. Like, there wasn't, now at least I have, I'm living with someone, we have social interaction, you know. It's a much better thing, it's a much better living situation in my opinion i think i'm much healthier now look at me much healthier how much weight did i lose in the past several years right eating much healthier now uh you know if i if i had my foot problem in connecticut it would have been a mother bitch to get rid of but because i'm here i was able to completely change my diet quickly adjust to it and things are great so i wouldn't give it up for the world yes it's different things are on a more set schedule things may be tighter time wise but overall it's been working out well and that's why i want to keep doing it all right, um, uh, the bottom line is I already answered this next question. The next question was all about, this is from Bleary Line 7, and I apologize because you already asked about, what do I think about the current console generation? Do I think that they're underpowered? What do I think about how the NX and the new uh, PS4 are already scheduled to come out? And I already kind of explained this previously, about how I think that the new PlayStation 4 is not needed. The game devs are not going to be caught up enough with their game development to utilize new hardware, even if the new hardware is so much better than what we currently have. I think it's bullshit. I don't think, I don't think Sony knows what they're doing. Um, do I think that the PS4 and the Xbox One are underpowered? Yes and no. I think that, if again, if the game devs weren't about this, they would take the time to actually put out great games. We've seen a few great games for these consoles. The problem is they're always in a constant rush for money. And so they rush the shit out way too early, and that's bad, right? Um... So really, I've already kind of talked about both the NX and about those consoles, so I apologize to Bleary Line. I would have given a full answer, except I already kind of answered it previously in another question. Okay. <clears throat> the next question, from Ben Wynn. He says, Phil, have you ever gambled at a casino? What did you play? How much money have you won or lost? And what advice would you give to someone who has a gambling addiction? I did gamble at a casino when I, you know, was of legal age. My friends and I went a few times. There was uh, actually a few high-profile casinos in the state of Connecticut that we went to. One's called Foxwoods, and I forget what the other one is called. I've been to both of the major casinos in Connecticut. 
what did I do when we when I was there? Well, primarily slots, because that's the cheapest thing, and that's the thing that takes more time to get through, right? But I also played Blackjack, and I'll be honest, I like Blackjack. Blackjack can be fun and addictive. It can also be a big-ass fucking money hole, because let me tell you what happened. There was this one time that I went with my friend, his name was Kong, and uh, we sat down at a Blackjack table, and there was this girl... To the, to the left of us, young, attractive girl. She said it was her birthday. She said, my birthday, I got good luck all day. You know, this could be a lucky table. We had an older guy to our right, an older gentleman. And we were all smart. We all understood the game of blackjack. We knew when to hold, we knew when to fold, we knew when to hit. You know what I mean? We knew everything. You got to know the rules of the game and know the... Because if you get one joker at a, at a table who plays like shit, it could ruin the whole deck for you. So, we sat there for about two hours, and I shit you not, in about two hours... Everyone at this table won almost a thousand dollars, almost a thousand bucks, and this was low stakes blackjack, by the way. We were doubling down at the right time. We were hitting blackjacks. We were getting big payouts, and it was crazy. You know, we were we were making bigger and bigger bets, and it was just wow. We were all making out. We were all making out. And I remember, both Kong and I looked at each other and we said, "Man, we made a lot of money." And we said, let's get, and we did. We got up from the table. We walked away with that big chunk of money. We went and took a break. We probably got some food, got a drink or whatever. And then we promptly went right back to the tables and lost all the fucking money. Because that's what happens when you go to casinos is you get hooked. Wow, I won this amount. Now I could use, you know, I could re-gamble it and make this amount. And that's the problem is that you get so addicted to it. That's that's the, why casinos make money. Because ultimately people will never stop. Once you get a taste, you got to get more, Right. And to, the, to some extent, this is exactly the same thing that's going on today with gaming, video gaming. These games that are basically gambling. You spend an amount of money to buy a pack. And it could be a pack of characters, a pack of cards, a pack of upgrades, whatever. But it's a randomized pack. So you have a random chance to draw something great that will make your game better. And overall, it'll be a, a lot more fun. Or you may just get a bunch of crap. And what happens is you spend a little bit of money. Oh, I didn't get anything. All right, I'll play again. You spend a little bit of money. Ah, I still didn't get anything. I'll try one more time. Spend a little. Oh, my God. I got the great item, right? Or I got the great card. I got the great character. Wow. That's cool. I got to keep going. And you go plunk, 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 plunk. And next thing you know, you've spent so much ridiculous amount of money, way more than you had even intended to spend because it's addictive, right? That, that, that chance of victory. It's almost like a victory. You open, you know... You gamble, you put that quarter into the, the, the slot machine, and even though you lose 500 times out of 501, it's that one time that you win, you're like, yes, now I gotta keep going. It's addictive, it's addictive behavior and addictive, uh, you know, gameplay. And what I can say is this, if you do find yourself an addictive personality, but you, f you enjoy doing things like that, you have to set boundaries and limits for yourself. And a lot of the times, I hate to say it, and I know this from firsthand experience, so please believe me. Even though you set those boundaries for yourself, you may not be able to live up to them. You may not be strong enough. And I'll be honest, there's a few things in my life that I get, you know, addictions. And I, even though I say, no, I'm going to go to this point and I'll stop, I can't stop. And so if that's the case, you need to have other people involved, whether it's a significant other, whether it's a family member, whether it's a friend. If you're going to go to a casino and you say, I have $500 that I have accrued and I'm going to spend that at the casino and that's it. That is it. And you said, guidelines. if I win $500, I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. I'll go get a drink or food, and I'll hang out with everyone else who's still playing, but I will not spend any more. And you need to stick to it because there's so many people, they blow their life fucking savings. They put themselves into massive debt because of stupid shit that doesn't matter, you know? What's the point of winning a couple times at the casino if you lost your life savings to do it and it's not going to make up for the difference? You know what I mean? The bottom line is there's always better. No matter what in life, there's always better. Even if you win $500, well, I could have won 1000 Well, you win 1000 finally. I could have won 10000 I could have won a million. There's always going to be, I could have won, I could have done, I could have done. You have to find a settling point where you're going to stop and stop the addictive behavior. Okay? All right. Next question. This is actually the final forum question. Then we'll head on to Twitter questions, and that'll be the end of Ask the King. Okay? Uh, hey, Proudy Phil, this is Shaquille Oatmeal here. Shaquille O'Neal's cousin, Shaquille Oatmeal. Quite honestly, I just think this person wanted to hear me read that. Okay. All right. Um, now we're going to get into it. What I was addressing earlier, but I only talked about Zelda. Now we're going to get more in-depth about the Nintendo situation. 
What is your opinion on how Nintendo is handling the NX and the Wii U situation this year? They decided to launch the console in March 2017 because they want to make sure that there are games to go along with it. He's talking about the new NX console. They've also decided to not share any news on the NX at E3, but instead to hold their own event later in the year, which I think is smart because you want to generate hype closer to the launch of the, the actual console. On the other hand, E3 could have had a wider reach and given the NX more publicity if they went down that route. Personally, I think that they're making a big mistake by missing the holiday season. There's a reason that very few consoles in North America uh, are not launching during that period. Launching during the holiday season could mean a very big boost in sales. On the Wii U front, I think delaying Zelda to 2017 to coincide with the NX launch might make this year look even more barren than 2015. In fact, Nintendo is projecting only $800,000, uh, excuse me, only 800,000 Wii U consoles sold for the entire fiscal year, not even a million units in a year. It just seems like a poorly thought out situation altogether. I was wondering what your opinion on it was, and if you were thinking of launching, uh, if you think launching the NX in March could have heavy repercussions for Nintendo's next big console. All right. So, there's actually two parts to this. Number one, what do I think about the Wii U now that we know what's going on with it and the NX? And number two, what do I think about this NX launch plan? Wii U is very straightforward and simple. I said this a few uh, weeks to m a month ago. I made a video. There was a strong rumor on the internet that the Wii U was not going to be produced anymore. Nintendo would stop manufacturing them all together. And a lot of people were up in arms and were like, Oh God, how dare you? You promised that this console would have a life cycle and you would you would support it. And now all this... Come and Nintendo came out and said, No, 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 don't worry. We're supporting it. We're not stopping production whatsoever. Here we are a month later. And Nintendo announces the one big game everyone's been waiting for for Wii U has been delayed. It was supposed to come out later this year. Probably was ready to be released for later this year, by the way. <clears throat> but it's being delayed until March 2017 to coincide with the launch of the Nintendo NX console so that it could be a cross-platform game. Now, for those of you who are longtime viewers, you remember my feelings about Rayman Legends being dele uh, delayed massively to be a cross-platform game and how I feel about that kind of bullshit. I think it's bullshit. <clears throat> it's not fair to the game developers. It's not fair to the gamers themselves. It's not fair to anyone. People, some people probably undoubtedly in the past year or two bought a Wii U to maybe play one or two games, but in the hopes because they heard, they were promised by Nintendo, the new Zelda's coming, the new Zelda's coming, the Zelda is coming, it'll be on Wii U. You need a Wii U to play the new Zelda, buy it now, blah, blah, blah. And now they're like, well, fucking sh fuck me in the asshole because I bought the Wii U. And now it's coming out for NX. And of course, everyone's going to want the NX version. It'll be the definitive version with the better graphics and whatever. And this is bullshit that now I bought a console that the game's not going to be on. Or it will be on, but it's the inferior version that no one's going to want to fucking play. The Wii U's dead. <clears throat> the Wii U's been dead for quite some time. Ever since the third-party developers dropped out some four years ago, the Wii U's been dead on arrival. The only people buying it are people who want the first-party Nintendo games and people who are hardcore fanboys who won't give up the fact that Nintendo actually could possibly do something wrong, which they've been doing constantly for the past several years. The Wii U was the worst performing console besides the Virtual Boy that the Nintendo, Nintendo has ever sold. And I'm not talking based on sales numbers. I'm not talking based on, you know, I'm talking about word of mouth and customer confidence the wii u is the most deflating console that nintendo has ever made when the virtual boy came out no one expected that thing to be a big fucking hit anyone who used it for five seconds got a headache the wii u we saw wow these are better graphics for nintendo we were promised that the things would be revolutionary with this new game pad and that it would definitely be the console to have third-party support and nintendo came through on literally none of their promises for this console it's just a joke at this point so if you really want my thoughts on the wii u it's over it's done with do not buy one whatsoever. The only reason you should buy a Wii U is if by the end of the year they start selling it for 100 bucks, and you can buy a wide variety of the, the first-party titles on the cheap. The problem is Nintendo fucking games never drop in price. Take a look. You, they're all, like, full-priced still. So you'll never get discounted games for, for the fucking Nintendo consoles for whatever reason. Probably because they're first-party. So, now let's give you my thoughts on the NX. First of all, the NX coming out in March 2017. Yeah, it is odd. It's very odd that this console would come out in March. Now, you have to ask, I wonder why. Is it because there's just no way they could get it ready for the end of the year? Is it because, like, they actually said, well, we don't want to sell this console till there's games for it? 
All right, okay, fair enough. If they released it in November and there was one or two shitty games for it versus they release it in March and there's 10 great games for it, that's a good idea in my opinion. The question is, what is the real truth? Is it because of the fiscal year of Nintendo? Because we just had a few flub bullshit and things going on with uh, Bandai Namco in regards to Dark Souls 3, where it came out in March in Japan, but April everywhere else because they wanted to inflate their fucking numbers for a certain quarter and certain demographics. Is that why Nintendo's doing it? I don't know. I don't know about their books. I don't know anything about their financials, but I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. There's got to be an underlying reason why Nintendo was going to release the NX in March of 2017, all right? Yes, I do think that selling this after the holiday season could d definitely deflate sales of the console initially. Absolutely. Because I, as I already previously said in this episode of Ask the King, customer confidence is down at a record low for Nintendo. Most people who bought the Wii U now officially feel like they've been burnt by Nintendo. They were fucked. They were told and promised the world. Nintendo failed to deliver. And they bought, instead focused on selling little fucking figurines because they couldn't put out, you know, the best games. They couldn't get the third-party support they promised. And everyone got burnt when they bought the Wii U. The console was an underpowered paperweight. Okay? And I hate to say that because I like Nintendo. And there have been a few good games. Don't get me wrong. There's been a few pretty great games on that console that I very much enjoyed playing. But for the most part, it hasn't been very quality. So... Are consumers going to come out and buy the next Nintendo console? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm kind of on the fence about it. And you know me, I cover the games. I am in a unique situation. That on YouTube, I'm in a managed partnership with Machinima. And with this managed partnership with Machinima, I'm actually able to put up Nintendo videos without the threat of content ID match, meaning that I can't advertise on my own videos, right? I can actually monetize Nintendo videos, which most people can't do on YouTube. Even I'm on the fence about buying the NX. Because unless, very shortly, Nintendo comes out and says, Hey, here's all this information on a bunch of ton great games that are coming out for the NX within the first year of launch. I don't fucking know if I want it. I'm tired of Nintendo. I'm tired of buying their shit and you know nothing to do on it. A paperweight. The NX. Out of all my consoles, by fucking far, the Wii U is used the least. And I barely use the Xbox One, but I've used the Wii U less than that. And it's a shame. It really is a shame, and I don't know. Um, I, it's, it's, it's disheartening. Because if they don't do well, if the NX doesn't sell well, and Zelda doesn't sell the console, this could be it. Nintendo would end up becoming more pop culture, you know, we'll, we'll make mobile games and we'll make figurines and enough of the console development because we just can't make great games anymore or we can't get consumer confidence anymore because we fucked up so many times. They've got to listen. If Nintendo wants this to be successful, they have to listen to their market base for the first time in fucking 20 years. They're going to have to stop what they're doing, put their ear to the ground, listen to what the consumer says and give them what they want. Not give them the pipe dream fucking crazy ass gimmick bullshit that fucking Miyamoto came up with one night when he had fucking LSD in his system and he said, oh, we're going to have a tentacle controller that just shove up your butthole and as you clench, then Mario will super jump. No, we need something that's going to fucking be good. That gamers, hardcore gamers want. Great games, great controls, great graphics. The trifecta of quality, right? That's what we need. And Nintendo needs to start with that shit. Right now, pronto. They need to listen to the gamers and give them what they fucking want and stop it with the gimmicks and the tie out scan my fucking Wii, my amiibo, and all this bullshit. No. If you want the market share back, you've got to give the consumers what they want. Let's see if Nintendo can wise up and do it. But I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen with this NX. I really don't want to give an opinion until we hear more about it. Right now, we don't know much about it. They're not even going to talk about it at E3. Let's wait till later this year when we get a big announcement, when we get more info, then I'll give you my further reactions on the Nintendo NX. All right. Okay, very quickly, a few Twitter questions, and we're done. <clears throat> First question from Movie Lord 101. He says, "What are your thoughts on Assassin's Creed no longer being a yearly series?" I almost dropped it. And I caught it. I think it's a good thing because look what happened when Assassin's Creed was a yearly series. We had the absolutely abysmal Assassin's Creed Unity that was not even optimized for the console that it was exclusive to. What a joke. We had Assassin's Creed 3, which really did not feel like a part 3. It felt like it was kind of a 
<clears throat> a different attempt at a game that was not even uh, a cohesive unit. You know, I did not like that game at all. A terrible protagonist and just some controls that made no sense. Tons of game bugs. Um, but on the flip side, sometimes you get great games. Remember Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag? That was good. Remember Assassin's Creed Syndicate last year? I loved that game. So it's like it's like every other year you get a shit game, and then in between you get good ones. So the question is, what's going to happen? I hope, I hope that now that they're not making an Assassin's Creed game every year, that maybe every two years we can get a quality fucking entry. Give me one great Assassin's Creed game every other year, and I'll be ecstatic, and I'll fucking, you know, play the shit out of it and rate it game of the year if it deserves it. But that's the bottom line, is the games were at some point feeling so rushed that there's no way that the amount of quality control or anything was put into them. I really hope that we see... Now, here's the thing. Syndicate was quite good. Next year, maybe, we'll see another Assassin's Creed. If this one comes out and it's a piece of shit, then uh, there's no excuse. Then it's just like, you just don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? But we'll see, but I'm happy it's not every year, and I'm actually happy, finally, to be taking a year off from Assassin's Creed. For the first time ever since I've been doing videos on YouTube. Can you believe it? <sighs> okay. Next question is from uh, German Rodriguez, or it could be Herman Rodriguez. I, excuse me if I pronounced it wrong. Do you think the new PS4 will have games that the old PS4 won't? Well, it's interesting, because I already addressed this. I said, game devs would be pretty fucking stupid to make games just for the new PS4, because the bottom line is, I don't think that the, the millions and millions who've bought the PS4 now are going to buy the new one. They already have it. They don't feel like they've gotten their money's worth out of the console as is. They're not going to run up and buy a new PS4 just because it has better hardware in it. And the bottom line is, yes, there'll be early adopters, but how many? Maybe a million? And I hate to say it, but to sell a game, a mainstream AAA game to only a million people is going to be considered a sales flop. So, really, when these game devs come down to it, they're going to have to look at the big picture and say, wow, how many ridiculous amount of million consoles sold here with the regular PS4? Only a million sold of the new. Obviously, we're going to design the game for this one, not this one, or a cross-platform. I'm undoubtedly sure there will be games that are exclusive to it, but much like the games that were exclusive to Wii U, will they get butt-fucked? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out, but I would be pretty dumb if I were a game developer and I were making games just for the new PS4, in my opinion. All right, next question is from uh, Gentleman. Gentleman. Okay, then. Gentleman asked the following. Sorry if you've explained this in the past, but I'm a new fan, so I don't know what's going on. Why did you remove your Majora's Mask 3D Let's Play from YouTube? <sighs> okay, well, from a new viewer, you probably have absolutely no clue what's going on. And I'm going to tell it to you in a nutshell and not try to get too much into the convoluted details, all right? There's a group of people who follow me around the internet and try to hurt me. I've never met these people. I don't know who they are. They basically have fucking problems, okay? And there's one group of people who found a way to abuse YouTube's copyright system. Okay, it's illegal. It's completely false, bogus, and illegal, but they found a loophole. What they do is they find in one of my videos a piece of artwork, a piece of fan art, something that basically I did not create myself 100%, all right? And what they do is they flag that to somewhere else on the internet where that art existed previously. They then claim that they're the creator of that art. All right, illegally because they're not, they lie. They say that like one guy actually said he's Nintendo. He works for Nintendo. And that I am using their art without permission and therefore they're placing a copyright claim and strike against my account. This happened last year during the summer and basically three to four videos on all of my channels, on my vlogging channel and on DSP Gaming, so both of my major channels, had videos flagged for copyright strikes because they fan art or artwork that was used. Now it's completely bogus, it is completely false. The problem is YouTube has a system that punishes the content creator first and asks questions later. You're actually guilty until proven innocent on YouTube with their current content ID and creation system, all right? It's completely anti-user. It's only for YouTube to protect themselves legally so they don't get sued just in case someone did actually steal someone else's copywritten content. So unfortunately, what I had to do, I had to go through all of my videos on YouTube where they had any kind of fan art whatsoever. Because, one, I'll be honest with you, one video that I had fan art in was Metroid Prime from last summer. All right, Now, it wasn't the game itself. It was actually a pre-stream where I was running a montage of like Metroid Prime artwork with my face superimposed onto it and stuff like that. Fan art. Someone found a picture of Samus in one of those pieces of artwork. 
found the original picture on like a Nintendo website, flagged it for that, and said that they worked for Nintendo. Okay? And because of that, I got a copyright strike. So what I had to do, I had to go on my DSP Gaming channel and literally find every video ever that had artwork in it. So we're talking spanning the entire life of my channel back to 2010. Every single pre-stream that had a montage of artwork, all of my Nintendo 3DS playthroughs, which always had templates made by fans, including artwork from the games, all had to be made private. So basically every 3DS playthrough I've ever done, gone. And that's why Majora's Mask is gone. Listen, I loved Majora's Mask. I had a lot of fun with that playthrough. I really enjoyed playing it. And it's a shame that no one can watch it now. Because I know there's tons of people who maybe have watched me watch things like Twilight Princess HD recently. And they're like, wow, that was great. Now I'd like to see Phil play other Zelda games. Wait a minute, why can't I watch this? Why is this set to private? That's why. Now, there may be a time in the future when YouTube fixes their broken copyright system. And I can make those videos public again. As of right now, I cannot. It sucks ass. I would love to do it. I can't do it because it's YouTube's fault 100%. And I don't have the money legally to sue them to make them fix their copyright system. So therefore, I'm stuck with thousands, no exaggeration, thousands of videos, including a Pokemon playthrough, Zelda playthrough, uh, Phoenix Wright versus uh, Pro uh, Professor Layton, which was an amazing playthrough that I thought I did and people really enjoyed. Um... You know, these are the kind of these are the kind of playthroughs that get a lot of attention and over time fans build up because of those fun playthroughs and I can never show them to anyone. Isn't that nice? Just because of the nice people out there who think that it's funny to basically commit crimes over the internet because they know that if you don't have money to go after them or prosecute them that they're completely scot free with no kind of repercussions. It's ridiculous, I know. <clears throat> Two more questions. First one from Ellen Shink. Ellen asks, my question is, uh, I'm saving money for a PlayStation 4, but my friends are now telling me I should save for the NX instead. What are your thoughts on that? Fuck no, buy the PS4. If you buy the PS4 right now, there's already tons of great games you can buy for it. Bang for your buck, you'll get tons of gameplay out of it regardless. The NX is completely uncertain. We don't know if we can trust Nintendo. We don't know if they're going to put out quality games for it. What games at what time. Nintendo could stop making games next year and go out of fucking business for all we know. <clears throat> Do not bank on the NX. Get the PS4. 100% that's my advice. And now the final question for Ask the King for April 2016 is brand new news. But the question was actually asked by uh, Mizore Lover. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. But the question was, Phil, could you please talk about the YouTube content ID news that just happened? Alright, fair enough. If you don't know what's just happened on YouTube... <clears throat> YouTube made an announcement on social media, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. Again, we had one of these a couple of months ago and I made a video about it. Remember how YouTube is screwing up and flat false flagging everyone for copyrights and people are abusing the copyright system and a lot of people are losing ad revenue and their businesses are being strongly affected by the false flags and stuff that's happening on YouTube. YouTube came out today this morning actually and made a post on Twitter saying, our content ID system has now changed for the better. Here's how it's going to work. You upload a video to YouTube and you put ads on it. Great. You start making money. A third-party company, for whatever reason, tries to claim your video and say that they own the copyright on it or you're using their copyrighted content and therefore they should get the ad revenue from it. What now will happen is the money will continue to come in. Ads will still show on the video. Money will continue to come in and will go to this in limbo account. So it just sits there and is in limbo temporarily. You now have a chance to dispute that claim against your video all right you'll dispute that claim during the process when it's being disputed that money still accrues still ad revenue is being made money still accrues it is in limbo then at the end of the dispute process if it gets cleared up and you win all that money that's in limbo goes to you if you lose that money goes to whoever claimed the content for copyright all right so basically here's what used to happen on youtube you would monetize a video, you'd start making money. Someone would just say, it's mine, it's my content. The ads would disappear from the video, you'd make no money. Okay? What would happen is, the advertisements would sometimes go over to the guy who claimed them. Now, you have to dispute the process, which could take weeks. So for two, three weeks, your video that's popular on YouTube is making money, and it goes to the person who claims it's theirs. Then, if you cleared up the dispute then the ads would revert to you. But all the revenue made in that time frame would go to the, the false claimant. Does that make any kind of logical sense? Legally, does that make sense? Of course fucking not. 
all right? So what YouTube is saying is that basically we finally changed our content ID system so if someone claims your video, we're actually legally now doing the right thing. So the big announcement this morning is that YouTube has finally, in one regard, decided to abide by the law. Wow! So YouTube's no longer a criminal. Wow! What a great announcement. But this the funny thing is, I saw this announcement, and I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, this isn't really news, it just means that finally, people maybe stop getting ripped off if they actually win the content ID appeal, which, by the way, if you're a little rinky-dink guy, you may not win it. You need to have a lot of clout on YouTube, right? Um... And I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is really a non-announcement. What YouTube is saying is they're violently abiding by the law and not robbing people, right? Because here's the deal. When you sign your a contract with YouTube or a partnership network, whoever it is, <clears throat> there's a legal agreement. And that legal agreement is that you're going to make ad revenue on your video. If YouTube takes that ability away, they have to legally prove there was a reason why. YouTube can't just all of a sudden say, well, fuck you, we're taking all your money. They can't. They have to legally have a shoe to stand on. For example, <clears throat> for example, way back when 2010, I was actually with AdSense. My ads on my videos, the ad revenue went to me. And after two months of making money, YouTube shut it off during the third month, about a week in, and said, we have detected fraudulent activity on your videos, and therefore we're shutting down your AdSense. Goodbye. Okay? Now, they withhold one week's worth of money. They, they could not withhold any more than that it was just the, that week of the month i could have gone to court i could have hired a lawyer and said bullshit because you did not provide legal proof that any fraudulent activity existed you'd have to prove in a court of law that this happened but the bottom line is for me to take them to court and hash them through court it wouldn't have been worth it probably i would have spent more money on the court case than the money that they withhold from me for that one week or whatever that they kept but that doesn't mean that it's illegal. That's not illegal. It does. It was illegal what they did. And if YouTube, if someone claims a copyright on your video, right, and it hasn't been legally proven that that video is stolen from someone else, it's illegal for YouTube to take your ad revenue off that video. It's illegal. I'm gonna, I am gonna. have to keep reiterating this. It's illegal. If someone were to sue YouTube for retroactively for all the times they've done this they would probably go out of business overnight because this is their this was their process was to break the law to have a legal agreement to provide advertisement revenue to an uploader and then they took the fucking ad revenue away and gave it to someone else with no definitive proof which is illegal so all this announcement this morning is is that youtube will now abide by the law and take the money and put it in limbo until it's determined who actually owns the content of a video. And then, rightly so, they'll get the ad revenue, alright? Now, let me tell you what this announcement didn't say. We're fixing our copyright strike process so no one could just false flag you without proof. We've improved our copyright process so that there's more checks and balances in place to make sure people aren't putting in false flags. Nothing. In fact, again, and I said this in my video two months ago about the subject, again, YouTube is pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. They've improved nothing. There's the same systems in place, the same broken system with false copyright strikes, false content ID matches is still in place and people can still abuse the fuck out of it. All they're telling you now is that, oh, you won't lose ad revenue if you eventually win the dispute process. You could get your ad revenue back. That would have happened during that time period. Well, gee, golly, gosh, thanks, YouTube. It took you two fucking months to figure out how to abide by the law, but now you want to fix your copyright system so that people don't abuse it? It's another non-announcement. It's YouTube trying to fool people. And I saw so many people respond to this on Twitter. Wow, did you hear the great news? This is trending on Twitter. YouTube's fixing everything. They fix nothing. All they're doing is abiding by the law so that someone can't sue the fuck out of them retroactively for probably the millions upon millions of dollars that they've stolen. It gives, I'm going to have a brain aneurysm one day when I see this stuff and people just totally don't understand what they're reading and they, and they like, uh, celebrate. People are like, celebrate on social media. YouTube is better. No, it's not. They didn't fix anything. The content ID system is still broken. The copyright system is still broken. They fixed nothing. All they did once again, they pulled the wool over everyone's eyes and everyone thinks it's all sunshine and fucking rainbows when nothing's been fixed at all. <sighs> Maybe someday, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Maybe someday, but we're far, far from an actual resolution to the problems on YouTube 
and we still need to be diligent about all the abuse and bullshit going on out there because it's still happening daily and you know oh we care and we listen to our users that's why we did this no what happened was a bunch of users banded together and you're afraid of getting sued in a class action lawsuit so you at least made it so what you're doing is kind of legal so you can't get sued you didn't actually fix the problem you just put a little band-aid over the crack in the dam right but now you've got to actually repair the fucking dam all right that's it for ask the king ladies and gentlemen for april 2016 i hope you enjoyed it like i said at the beginning the next episode will be coming in late june or early july i'll let everyone know as we get closer as we get you know events and stuff with patreon and everything are taking form and game releases i don't want to promise you a date when i'm not sure yet but Right now, you can submit your questions on the forums. Link's in the description. Thanks for watching, Ask the King, everyone. I love that you guys continuously send me great questions. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, peace out.